Hey guys, so what we're looking at today is the Latin noun declensions. So the first thing that we have to remember about Latin noun declensions is that it's just another word for groups. So anytime you see the declensions in a grammar question, you're automatically thinking of the word groups. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to do a table out of the feminine nouns. So the ones that you will see in your book in front of you is Puella and the one we did in class today was Terra. Now, on top of that, what well, how it comes out in this PowerPoint is slightly different to the way I would learn it. So the way I would lay it out when I'm doing these verb tables, or these noun tables even, sorry, be nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, and ablative. And I would look at it that way then, guys. And we know what they are then. So nominative, we've already seen, is the subject of the sentence. Okay. The vocative is to call someone. So if I'm referring to someone by name or if there's a direct conversation, and you'll see it especially when you're doing your Oxford Latin in these direct conversations, when someone just calls someone by name, when someone's referring to someone, when someone's talking to someone, that's the vocative. And then the accusative, which we've seen already with the kind of nouns ending in M, is the object of the sentence, the thing having the action done to it. Now, the rest of them we haven't seen yet bar ablative. So remember, ablative was to do with direction. And that's still the case. But genitive and dative. Now, we're going to pro look at them later, but genitive refers to when the noun follows the word of. So, for instance, the father of the son or the teacher of the class. So the thing that takes the of would become the genitive. And you also then have the dative, which refers when you're talking to doing something to someone or doing something for someone. So, for instance, I am saying this to you now. I am writing for this class. That All that stuff is the dative. But we're looking at terror. So what we have here then... As I said, on the PowerPoint and the one that's posted is slightly different because it's nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative. But if you please look over the rest right-hand side of the screen, you have nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative is the way I would lay it out. So we have a, ah, a. Ah. So if we look back here. So this is the way it's laid out with these endings. And you can see these endings again on page 145 of your book. The noun section. So we'll take it as it is here with Tara that we've seen already, or in your book, it's Puella. So you have Tara. Now, the vocative isn't in this slide, but the vocative is also Tara. So it's the exact same nominative and singular. I say nominative and vocative in the singular feminine. Now, the accusative, we see the AM, and we know it's Taran. And then the genitive and the dative are the same in this case. So it's tere, tere, tere. So what we already have seen here from the nominative vocative singular is that these two here are the same. And what we've seen from the genitive and the dative is that these two take the same endings. So now... We look at the plural. So the plural, again, is missing the vocative. What we know here from this, which is the same as the singular, is the nominative and the vocative take the same endings. So terre and terre. So those AE endings. Now, our genitive, our accusative, our dative, and our ablative. So our accusative then takes terras. So this is something new that we've seen. This AS ending in the plural accusative, which is different to the AM ending that we would have seen in the singular accusative. So notice that. So then the genitive becomes terrarum. But look, guys, in the plural feminine, the dative and ablative take the same endings instead. So the dative and the genitive take the same endings here and what we look at is the accusative case in the plural 
takes a different ending to the accused of case that we'd be used to in the nominative or in the singular. So our second, so our first declension, we just always remember then, is the feminine group. So our second declension then is the masculine group. Now, there is a third group or third declension in this case for neuter nouns. But for the purpose of today's video, we don't need to know about that yet. So we're just focusing on the masculine and the feminine. So the ones that you are going to go with here, that you'll have in your, your PowerPoint, you'll have something different. But I'm going to go to ones for your book for you here. You have Colonus, which is a farmer. And you have Puer, which is a boy. So again, Colonus, the US ending in denominative, and Puer, that R ending in denominative, shows us that he's a masculine noun. So notice while all the feminine singular nominatives would end in A, a singular masculine noun would normally end in US or R. So how does that change the endings? So what I'm going to do here is move on slightly, and this is our template at the side for the feminine. But for the masculine, I'm going to go back to the way it's done in your book. So we have our N, B, A. We have our G, D, A. So we have nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative. Same thing with the plural. We're going N, V, A, G, D, A. And we lay it out just as it is, like that for us. So we'll take the first one, which is Clonus, which is a farmer. So it goes Clonus. I notice, guys, that hyphen I'm putting is just artificial. If you were to see this a word and it's only be no hyphen, this is just to show you how the endings work. The vocative then will be clone A. And the accusative, clone on. So what we know already, we see that US for the nominative. We see that UM for the vocative. Or for the accusative. But look notice now, the vocative takes an E ending. Okay? And that E produces an A sound. Now, then our genitive is clone E with an I, which confusingly produces the E sound. So it's pronounced that way, but I'm just more concerned with the spelling and not so able to recognise it. And then the date of an ablative here, which is clone O and clone O. So again, the dative and the ablative are the same here. Okay, so take notice of that. The dative and the ablative are the same. Okay, so just leaving that up so we can see that. And if I can get that, sorry, just let you zoom out there for a second. Okay. So, just moving out. So, so we know the clone E has that E sound and we know clone A, which is a vocal, has the A sound. So then we go down to the plural. And it is. Let me go back to this. We have our NVA and we have our GDA. So it's clone E. The vocative now is clone E. And the accusative becomes clone OS. So look, what you have here is we're looking now in plural nouns, both in the feminine and the masculine, the endings are different to their singular form. So we have AS and we have OS. Okay. Now our genitive is clonorum. And then again, our date of an ablative remains the same. Clonus and clonus. So 
so just like the plural nouns date of an ablative in this first declension, they're the same in the second declension. Same endings. Same as in singular. The big thing here, guys, is if we look now, cloni in the genitive, singular ends in I. Cloni in the singular plural and the genitive plural ends in I. Uh, sorry, the nominative and the vocative plural ends in I. So what we've got to learn is, as well as looking and learning the endings, you've got to realise that some endings are the same in some words in the, in the singular and the plural. So you've got to read the context. There is no magic formula to this. It is a matter of going through the tables in your head, whether that's going clonis, clone, clonum, clone, clono, clono, clone, clone, clonos, clonorm, clonis, clonus. It is one of those things, guys, where you just have to do repetition. So you have that NVA, GDA format in your head, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative, NVA, GDA. And then with the singular and the plural, masculine and feminine nouns it comes to a case where you just have to be able to learn those little tables for instance you should be tara tara taram tara 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 or tara tara taras taram taris taris just again repetition so that's how it is with clonus but again as we said there is the r endings in the masculine declension so we're looking at puer so again we're going nva Nominative, vocative, accusative. And we're going genitive, dative, ablative. Same thing, we've got the plural, N, V, A, G, D, A. So, we have puer, puer, puerum. You have then with genitive pueri puero and puero. So again, unlike the US masculines, if a masculine noun ends in R, the nominative and vocative takes the same ending. Don't ask me why, it's just how this grammar developed. But there are some things then that stay the same. Like the U-M for the singular accusative. And how we have that I, O, and O endings for the genitive, dative, and ablative singular. So we look how that goes then into the plural versions. So, we have pueri, pueri, pueros. You have porn, you have puris, and you have again, guys, puris. So, again, the nominative, I say the plural masculine for both the US nouns and the R nouns are the exact same. The accused of genitive, dative, and ablative in the singular of the nominatives are the same. It's just where the change here and the difference between the two comes from the nominative and the vocative. And again, it's just something we have to learn. So there's our difference. So guys, thanks for listening to this. As I said, this thing takes a bit of practice. This thing takes a bit of time. But just remember when we're learning to go back to this format this structure nva gda now in the powerpoint that i've posted as well online for you you will see the third declension you'll see the one with the neuter nouns i don't need you to worry about that i need you to just keep having a look at this again as you're doing your notes and your grammar and your translation this thing takes time but once we have this baseline and once we have this table of nouns worked out and once we get it clear in our head it's just like the verb endings once you crack the endings and once you do that bit of practice guys everything else falls into place think of it as that jigsaw where we're putting all the pieces together to form those full sentences okay thank you for listening guys and i'll post again soon goodbye